Final Fantasy 16 will be here real soon, and if you were looking forward to a nice, meaty, open-world game with over-the-top action combat mixed in with a massive, fantastical open-world setting, well, you may be partially disappointed. Keep what I said about the fast-paced action and the fantastical setting, but disregard the open-world bit, because this latest mainline Final Fantasy entry will not feature an open-world. But is that necessarily a bad thing? I'm going to explain why Square's departure from the open world setting for its 16th mainline entry is actually something we ought to celebrate coming up right after I announce this month's game giveaway. Starting today, May 15th, go ahead and enter into this month's giveaway for a chance to win one of two copies of Final Fantasy 16. You heard that right, I will be giving away two copies of the game provided by yours truly, so make sure to enter, linked in the description and pinned in the comment for your chance to win the game. You have until the end of the day on Monday, June 19th to enter, giving you five weeks to secure your shot to win a digital copy of the game. So even if you are slightly interested in this hot upcoming PS5 game, why not give it a shot? The giveaway is open to anyone and everyone, so good luck to all those who participate. Alright then, let's begin. Love em or hate em, open world games are certainly here to stay. With the recent success of industry juggernauts like The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, and other notable open world games in recent years, this genre and its immense popularity will no doubt continue far into the future. Even so, a franchise like Final Fantasy, a series that has been around for 35 years that has seen its share of changes over the decades, is instead walking away from the open world genre after its 15th mainline entry made its first attempt at it. Depending on who you ask, Final Fantasy XV and its open world was met with a mostly lukewarm response. Now, we aren't going to get into why Final Fantasy XV was or was not a good open world game in this video but we are going to focus on the aspects of why Final Fantasy XVI is likely making the correct design decisions in walking away from the open world setting. There are a myriad of ways that taking Final Fantasy XVI in a more linear structure is advantageous, and although I can't possibly mention all of them here, I will outline some of the key areas that will undoubtedly benefit the game, including tighter narrative focus and pacing, enhanced combat mechanics and combat spectacle, and better world design. Let's begin by talking about tighter narrative focus and pacing. With Clive Rosefield, the protagonist of Final Fantasy XVI, players will live out various eras of the character's life, starting with his teens, before shifting to his 20s and then 30s. Going through various time periods of a protagonist's life isn't something new to role-playing games, but having the game's structure play out in a more linear fashion is highly beneficial for Square Enix, as they are able to craft settings, environments, and themes that better match the current time period the game takes place. Managing an open-world game that takes place over the course of three decades is a lot of work from a developmental standpoint, especially in a world with as much political turmoil and conflict that we see here represented in the story of Final Fantasy XVI. There will undoubtedly be a lot of destruction, decay, and change that takes place over the course of the story, and with a story that takes place throughout important developmental periods of a young character's life, having a linear approach to the world design better sets up the resulting growth and setbacks that Clive and those around him will ultimately experience. Beyond the different time periods of Clive's life, the game's developers are allowed to spend more precious resources in refining the way the story is told. Better detail and character models, lip syncing and animations are just one facet that more linear games excel at over open world titles. Along with general pacing and side quest content, of which I will get into in my last point, but it doesn't just end there. Putting big, over-the-top action scenes on the level of old-school God of War would be admittedly incredibly time-consuming and challenging to do within an open-world setting, and yet with a more direct and clear focus with story and its progression systems, these big fights are not only possible to do within this linear setting, but the sheer quantity of that quality can be better replicated. The combat on display here in Final Fantasy XVI is quite the departure for the mainline Final Fantasy games. 
The only one closest to it in comparison would be something like the excellent Final Fantasy VII Remake in which the battle system plays out in real time with some elements of menu navigation to enter in commands. In Final Fantasy XVI though, every aspect of the game's combat is done in real time, and this time it is fast as hell. Like Devil May Cry fast, seeing as the lead battle designer from the Devil May Cry series, Ryota Suzuki, is the lead combat designer here. The game's combat is fast, fluid, flashy, and seems to translate the beautiful particle effects and magical flair that Final Fantasy has been known for while leveling it up to unseen heights. Clive is able to learn different movesets from various entities known as icons, the summons of the iconic Final Fantasy creatures, allowing him to imbue his attacks with the elemental strikes of such creatures, but with the brutal ferocity in which these summons represent. The swift and agile strikes of Garuda are frenetically displayed with rapid slashes and wind gusts towards enemies, while the slow yet skull-crushing concussive strikes of Titan's hits deal devastating damage to enemies caught within Clive's strikes. This extemporaneous switching of standard and elemental strikes is deliberately focused and feels like an extension of what made Final Fantasy VII Remake's combat so remarkable, fun, and kinetic. Now, I'm not saying that combat like this cannot be done in the open world setting, but you certainly wouldn't find anything close to resembling that of the icon battles on display here in Final Fantasy XVI. These over-the-top, larger-than-life set-piece battles pit icon versus icon, summon versus summon, in a brutal showdown to the death in what looks like a mashup of God of War and Shadow of the Colossus, as these larger-than-life classic entities battle in a dazzling display of color, style, and brutal finesse. These fights are not limited to just one or two encounters, no. These fights are said to be quite common and help punctuate major story moments throughout the game's storyline, so expect a lot of unique gameplay and combat, ranging from straight up brawling to shooting targets to scaling structures and more in these over-the-top battles. We've talked about how this more linear game design will help focus the story and the combat moments of Final Fantasy XVI, but we also can't omit the incredible ways that this linearity can also aid in its world design. Final Fantasy has always had incredible environments to explore, and it appears like this one will be no exception. Expect vast urban environments, lush forests, expansive deserts, tropical getaways, and more to explore and get lost in. With numerous side quests to undertake that spans across the game world, it is safe to say that we will be revisiting these locations throughout our playthroughs, and perhaps more than once, as this game's narrative follows Clive throughout three distinct periods of his life. The world design here goes hand in hand with the pacing as well, as this more linear world design resembles something like Final Fantasy VII Remake, in which the game doesn't necessarily break the pacing of its story during the quieter moments of the narrative. While some open world games have urgent, nearly world-ending events on the cusp of happening, yet at the same time encourages players to tackle side quests at their leisure like there's nothing to really worry about, this odd narrative disconnect could be completely absent here in Final Fantasy XVI if its side content, like Final Fantasy VII Remake's side content, come at times where the story deliberately takes its time to slow down. This linear approach to game design better ushers players through moments that are carefully crafted that fit with the direction and tone of the current story beats to give players time to venture off the beaten path and to tackle quests that seem congruent with the tone currently established. This game is said to be a long one, and although we don't have a ballpark estimate of how long the game will be, there will be many things to keep players occupied with Final Fantasy XVI. Although the game is not open world, expect numerous areas where the area is massive and open, exploring its far reaches for both treasure and side quests alike to take on, all while traveling through decidedly more linear areas to progress the narrative. Although I didn't cover every single aspect about the strengths that linearity plays to Final Fantasy XVI's benefit, just know that everyone is different and has different expectations when coming into a long-running franchise like Final Fantasy. If the team at Square are confident in tackling an open world setting for a future Final Fantasy title, I'm curious to play it for myself and see what it's like. But as for what has currently been shown for Final Fantasy XVI, I couldn't be happier in seeing the direction it is currently taking. 
a direction that I believe will only strengthen the quality of this 16th mainline entry of this legendary RPG franchise. I want to know from you in the comments if you agree with my sentiment here. Feel free to add your thoughts in the comments below and also make sure to participate in that giveaway. Watch this video here for more general information about Final Fantasy 16, and I will make sure to have more content coming up real soon discussing this upcoming PS5 monster of a game. Thank you for the awesome support, and I'll see you real soon in the next video. Peace!